Hi everyone, David Watson here to do a review of the Wake, the Wacom Cintiq 24 HD Touch. This is my second review of the device. Uh, this is to go through and kind of discuss how it's been over the last year. Uh, let's start with some of the reasons that I thought about buying this device. Uh, I've been a long time lover of Wacom products. I uh, had I had a 9 by 11 serial interface. Uh, serial was before USB. So I used the tablet to draw clear back in the 90s. I bought the original painter in a can. I've always liked the idea of having a pen to be able to sketch and draw and paint with digital interfaces or di digital interface. Chances are that if you're thinking about doing it, you probably have the same desires. Uh, if you know about me from my bio, you know that the prim my primary profession is designing software interfaces. This usually involves a large amount of drawing. Uh, about six years ago, I convinced my boss to let me get a Cintiq 21 UX for work. Uh, and if you're looking at the 24 Touch, 24 HD Touch, chances are that you're already a digital artist of some sort or want to be. Uh, when the announcement came with the 24 HD, I got really excited about the added capabilities, the extended full HD resolution. Uh, trying to do digital whiteboarding with the 21 inch was a pain. <clears throat> I thought having the 1920 by 1200 resolution would, would be awesome because that's what the projector was. Probably my main excitement came from uh, the enhanced ergonomics and being able to pull the drawing surface closer to me. Drawing on the 21 UX was all right, but I had to keep a keyboard close by, and drawing it on a, took uh, some effort and hurt the back a little bit. To my surprise, uh, Wacom t announced the Touch version roughly the same time as the 24 HD. To me, this was going to remove the need for keeping an external keyboard nearby, uh, and that that was going to be great. Uh, I watched several of the marketing videos that showed the beta software that made this thing really sing and I really had to have one. Uh, here's what I actually have ended up using it for. My primary things is uh, drawing user interfaces mostly in Photoshop. A uh, little photo retouching in Lightroom and Painter 12 on my personal time. So I use this thing to draw, edit, and prototype and share what I'm drawing by hooking up to an HD projector and mirroring the Cintiq display on the projector. I started with Windows 7 Enterprise Edition and most of the features that were demoed in the beta software uh, were released by the time I got the Cintiq. And while it wasn't perfect, uh, I liked Painter. I, well, Painter had some, some issues. Photoshop had some issues. Uh, being able to touch in certain places in Painter is weird. Uh, even though the multi-touch zoom and rotate continue to work, uh, it was pretty awesome. Photoshop had its own strangeness using the touch features to zoom and rota rotate, uh, but it worked for the most part. Being able to see what you're drawing and touching right on the screen as you draw it is amazing. Especially when you switch between a pencil and a pen to a brush to selection to watercolors, it's awesome. Uh, as a monitor, color reproduction is, is hugely improved over the 21, uh, so you get the better gamut and you can basically see all of the colors. It's a lot more contrasty, a lot brighter. Here's the things that I didn't expect or didn't like. Um, I don't even know where to start. So I thought the software updates would fix all the annoying little bugs that seemed to happen in the initial release. I upgraded the Wacom drivers and other software like Photoshop as soon as it was released. Uh, this was the worst experience that I've had with any set of software and hardware combination. I'm not one to complain about buggy software because I know the nature of software because I, I develop software. Uh, it's rarely perfect, but when every update actually made things worse or kept things the same, I went from annoyed to livid in the course of just a several several months. I updated to Windows 8 thinking that maybe these products were being tested in Windows 8 and I didn't have it. Uh, it didn't make a difference. So without taking you through the whole process today, almost a year after the release of the product, it doesn't even work as well as it did the first day. I actually did an unboxing and a review of the product when I got it and showed the features. Some of them don't even work now. 
As far as I can tell, Adobe pulled out from being able to support some of the basic features of touch and pen enablement. So for most people, this means that the primary software choice, Adobe Photoshop, requires the touch feature to be turned off. This wouldn't be so bad except for the fact that it kind of worked before and it was a selling point in the marketing material. It was very strange to watch how Wacom had removed marketing material and placed disclaimers on their website saying that the Adobe didn't support touch. Uh, it also wouldn't be as bad if the touch version were only a few hundred dollars difference, but it's not. It's a thousand dollars more, a third more for the touch version. Uh, I don't think that knowing what I know now that having the touch version is worth the trouble and the heartache that I've had over this past year. My disclaimer for this is that Adobe might come around. They might do an update tomorrow and make it all better. The testing teams, though, over the past year, I wanted to wring your necks. Uh, they let marketing and sales team push through that product. Their updates weren't tested. Shame on them. Shame on Adobe for not recognizing the trend and having touch-ready products with the release of Windows 8. This was the primary reason that most people bought Windows 8 tablets that supported Photoshop, and it doesn't work. Uh, I can't understand. I can understand why they didn't do an RT version, but if you are you really going to ignore the market potential with the touch and pen combination, I don't understand what you're doing, Adobe. Uh, I spent a huge amount of time trying to get the touch keyboard that would work. I found the Windows 7 virtual keyboard to be useful, but without enough flexibility to really use it to replace a hardware keyboard. The Windows 8 touch keyboard is better in some areas, uh, but much worse as a replacement keyboard. It's designed for just the tablet interfaces and not for desktop screens. Uh, I'll probably do a full review just on the state of the virtual keyboard world because I went down the rabbit hole and tried every piece of software that I could customize with. Um, so, super cool things that I loved about it. With all that said, ignoring the touch features for a moment, the pen interface, even though there, there have been problems with certain pens and certain programs for a lot of people, for me it's worked really well. Like I said before, the color brightness and the texture of the screen are all great. It doesn't get hot like the 21 UX did. The touch ring and programmable buttons are so much better and very useful. Uh, I love the multi-touch added capabilities that are also programmable when they work. Being able to position the screen at an angle to prevent your back, pulling, pulling it off the desk and towards you uh, is awesome. It's too bad you have to turn off touch. Uh, in a lot of cases. So, as you can probably tell, I'm pretty disappointed with this product. Uh, so, it's kind of like having this dream come true. You get the best of both worlds, best screen, great color, great ergonomics, and it doesn't end up delivering. Uh, very frustrating for the past year. Uh, I, at some point, I actually just started using it as a screen and went back to the mouse and keyboard. I was so frustrated. Uh, there may come a day when Wacom and Adobe get back together and give creative professionals the best experience that money can buy. Could be next month, could be next year, could be never. Right now, there's no reason to buy the touch version unless you're a glutton for punishment like me. Wait till they figure out what the hell they're doing. Uh, they released the 22 HD. I pity those people who bought the touch version. So that's my review. I hope you find it useful. Uh, I'll show some, some video here at the end of stuff that I've done on it. Thanks for watching.